Rico TV, man, and I'm back with another video, man. Y'all see what we got going on. We got how did this cargo ship lose power and crash into the Baltimore Bridge. So with that said, man, before we even get started, this whole situation is crazy. When I first woke up and seen it happen, it was just like, man, what really is going on? But when I seen the video, I, I, I feel like it was definitely something just as simple as a mechanical error. I don't think it was nothing more to the extreme than that. But of course, over social media, you got a lot of people that feel like it was more to this whole situation and why the ship ended up crashing into the bridge the way it did. But me, I just feel like it was it's something as simple as power on uh, mechanical error or something. But other than that, man, I also want to say RIP to those that lost their lives in this whole situation and um, prayers and um, um, hope for a speedy recovery to those that's pretty much recovering from this situation as well as we already know some people have survived this situation and is currently recovering, et cetera, et cetera. So prayers and uh, hope for a speedy recovery to those that's pretty much were able to um, survive, but definitely RIP to those that lost their lives. But with that said, man, y'all know what time it is. Um, before we even get started, if you're brand new to the channel or you've been watching videos on the channel, not yet subscribe. Please hit that subscribe button right now. And also don't forget to smash that like button. And also don't forget to turn on post notifications so you guys get notified when I drop new videos. With that said, though, man, y'all know what time it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the screen record. That started, we're gonna start this vid now. At around 1.30 a.m. on March 26, 2024, the central sections and the three and the closest people that sections crossed the over literally seconds the before. Bridge, I know located in the Baltimore they just don't know what to think when this collapsed happened. when a massive this container ship crazy. hit one of its supports. Two individuals it's like no words can really one was be put into while the other how was taken to hospital feel when they seen condition. this happen. In real Six time. workers who were maintaining the bridge at the time disappeared. Two bodies were found, and the other four are still missing. The collapse has caused a major obstacle for most ships going to and from the port of Baltimore. Governor Wes Moore of Maryland described the incident as a global crisis, impacting nearly 10,000 jobs and hundreds of thousands of travelers who use the bridge in their commute. The closure of the waterway is resulting in estimated losses of $15 million per day. The question everyone is asking is simple. What exactly happened to trigger a 1,200 feet bridge to collapse with such violence, seemingly out of nowhere, in the middle of the night? The answer lies in the MV Dali, a Neo Panamax container ship, with quite a complicated history. Let's dive in. And some people feel like something exploded on there because too in the video we did see like black smoke before the bridge um before the ship even crashed into the bridge we did see black smoke but it's not really um from what i've been seeing so far it's not really told what caused that black smoke but i could be wrong because like i said from what i've seen i haven't really seen nothing recent that may have been updates to the whole situation as of yet, but this video is definitely gonna pretty much help me get caught up to speed if I haven't. But other than that, man, we're gonna see what really happened or possibly what really did happen because we don't know if this person has got the full complete facts or not. But other than that, so far, it sounds like they definitely know what they're talking about. So we're gonna go ahead and continue on. The Francis Scott Key Bridge was a large steel arch-shaped bridge that stretched across the Patapsco River. It was one of the longest bridges in the United States, opening in 1977 and spanning about 1.6 miles from Hawkins Point in Baltimore to Sollers Point in Dundalk, Maryland. This bridge was a crucial part of Interstate 695, a road that goes around Baltimore and was heavily used by around 35,000 vehicles every day. The Patapsco River is a vital waterway connecting the port of Baltimore to the Chesapeake Bay and the Atlantic Ocean. This port was very busy, handling almost 450,000 passengers and more than 50 million tons of foreign cargo, valued at $80 billion in 2023. It was the second largest port in the US for coal and the leading port for lightweight vehicles for many years, dealing with nearly 850,000 cars and trucks in 2023. The MV Dali, the vessel under the microscope, was a large container ship registered in Singapore 
and operated by Synergy Marine. And I ain't never seen the ship that long from this point of view before. So to see how big it is is crazy. But um, I never drove over a bridge that long before. You guys comment down below what's the longest bridge y'all ever drove over and how y'all felt driving over that bridge. But me personally, I don't know how I would feel driving over a bridge that long because we know like even the, um, the bridge that's in San Francisco, we know how long that one is. And we heard the stories about being on that bridge and driving it and stuff like that, and, um, et cetera, et cetera. So like I said, man, you guys comment down below how y'all felt driving over a bridge that long. But uh, now let's get back to the video. Group with ownership under Grace Ocean Private Limited also based in Singapore. It was constructed in 2015 and was approximately 980 feet long, 157 feet wide, and had a draft of about 40 feet. The ship was chartered by the Danish shipping company Maersk and had passed two inspections in 2023, one in Chile where a repair was made to a fuel pressure gauge and another by the US Coast Guard in New York where no issues were apparently found. Dali's journey began from Panama to New York, reaching New York on March 19, 2024, then proceeded to the Virginia International Gateway in Portsmouth, Virginia. Departing Virginia on March 22, the ship arrived in Baltimore on March 23. The crew on board comprised of 20 Indian nationals and one Sri Lankan. The main channel of water beneath the bridge was approximately 50 feet deep, while charts from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration indicated that the depth around the bridge supports was about 30 feet. When the bridge was constructed in 1977, the largest container ships could carry around 2,000 to 3,000 containers of standard size, known as 20-foot equivalent units, or TEU. However, with the completion of the Panama Canal expansion project in 2016, the capacity for container ships passing through the canal increased significantly, from 4,500 to 12,000 TEU. To accommodate these larger vessels, the Maryland Port Administration upgraded facilities, including installing new cranes and dredging the harbour. MV Dali, completed in 2015, had a capacity of 10,000 TEU and was nearly fully loaded with approximately 4,740 foot containers at the time of the collision. Although a smaller ship caused minor damage to one of the bridge's supports in 1980, Former officials from the Maryland Transportation Authority revealed that the authority did not investigate the potential impact of a larger ship collision. Instead, they focused on studying potential terrorist threats following the September 11th attacks, or structural weaknesses, similar to those that led to the tragic collapse of the I-35 Mississippi River Bridge in 2007. <clears throat> Federal regulations aimed at safeguarding bridges from ship collisions were revised in 1991 after the collapse of the Sunshine Skyway Bridge in 1980. However, existing bridge- It still is just crazy to see structures like this just collapse and be destroyed in water and stuff like that. And pretty much all the damage that was done, it's just crazy to see for real. But other than that, let's get back to the vid. These were exempted from these regulations, including the Francis Scott Key Bridge. The Francis Scott Key was said to have lacked the advanced protective systems required by newer bridges, protective measures that may have prevented the impending collapse. At 12.44 a.m. EDT on March 26, 2024, the MV Dali departed from the port of Baltimore, headed for Colombo, Sri Lanka, with two local harbour pilots on board. Shortly after, at 1.24 a.m., the ship experienced a total loss of power, blacking out and causing the vessel to drift out of the designated shipping lane. Although a backup generator kept some electrical systems. You just know the people on the ship is definitely panicking at this point because it's like, why is the lights and everything going off right now? We moving. So it's like, if if the lights is going off and we moving, we ain't gonna be able to stop the ship in time or anything before we even come close to the bridge. And obviously we seen what happened. But that said though, man, it's just crazy that this happened, how it happened and stuff, and yeah, so that's all my, this is just my honest reaction, honestly, so I don't know what to say, like, I'm still at a loss for words at seeing how this all happened, but let's get back to the video. ...running, 
it couldn't power the ship's engines. Recognising the danger, the crew issued a distress call at 1.27am, warning that they had lost control and a collision with the bridge was imminent. Oh, so they pretty much already knew that the pilots urgently anyway requested a halt to traffic on the bridge. As the ship's lights flickered on and off, indicating electrical issues, the Maryland Department of Transportation swiftly acted on the pilot's request, stopping traffic in both directions. So that explains yes, why we see no more Wait, cars passing by, up? like Let literally seconds before okay, the ship hit the bridge. Because I was wondering too, to like, why all of a sudden all these cars yes. just stopped now going past. To but alien. now this all so let's explains. go take down the friend. Moments later, at 1:28 a.m., the ship struck the southwest pier of the bridge's like said, central man, span people that at a speed of approximately eight knots. Before that, Prior to the collision, data showed the ship's speed at around 8.7 knots before slowing to 6.8 knots at the time of impact. The force of the collision caused the bridge to break apart almost instantly, with sections collapsing into the water below Within and severing seconds. the roadway. Some parts of the bridge fell onto the ship's bow. The entire incident was captured on video, which I'm sure you've already seen. Although there were vehicles on the bridge at the time, it was initially believed that no one was inside them. Workers who were conducting maintenance on the bridge were on a break in their vehicles when the collapse occurred. Nearby residents reported feeling strong vibrations resembling an earthquake. A massive rescue operation was launched, with the Coast Guard deploying boats and a helicopter to assist. Fifty divers from various public safety agencies were dispatched to search for anyone who might have fallen into the river. The Francis Scott Key Bridge's design relied heavily on its overall structure to stay intact. In simpler terms, it didn't have backup support if any part failed, making it extremely vulnerable to damage. When the ship collided with the bridge, it destroyed a crucial pier, causing the southern and central sections to collapse, which then led to the northern section collapsing as well. These collapses happened rapidly, with each part falling within seconds. Within half a minute, the main spans along with three others had all fallen. Interestingly, the bridge was considered to be up to code before the collapse. It did have some safeguards in place, like dolphin and fender protections meant to withstand ship impacts, but these measures turned out to be inadequate. Out of the 4,700 shipping containers on the MV Dali, 13 were damaged during the collision. Two of these containers ended up in the water, fortunately without any hazardous materials. The ship itself suffered damage to its hull above the waterline and got stuck on the channel floor due to debris from the collapsed bridge. Despite this, it remained sealed, and initially the shipping company claimed there was no pollution directly from the ship. However, authorities later found a sheen in the water, likely from a small oil leak of about 21 gallons from the ship's bow thruster. To contain any potential pollution, authorities set up about 2,500 feet of barriers around the ship, and on March 27th, the National Transportation Safety Board launched an investigation into a hazardous material spill from breached containers aboard the MV Dali. Despite the initial belief this was unnecessary, among these containers were some of the 56 carrying around 764 tons of hazardous materials, including corrosive and flammable substances like lithium batteries, along with various class 9 and that very, very well could be what was all caused all the black smoke to appear too before the bridge even hit, um, before the ship even hit the bridge. So, man, it's just crazy though, just hearing everything that's pretty much going on around this whole thing. But other than that, let's get back to the video. Materials. A material is designated as hazmat class nine if it possesses characteristics such as anesthetic, noxious, or other properties that could significantly disrupt the duties of flight crew members due to extreme annoyance or discomfort. Additionally, it includes materials meeting the criteria for elevated temperature substances, hazardous waste, or marine pollutants. At the time of the collapse, the water temperature was reported to be 47 degrees Fahrenheit, or 8 degrees Celsius. Two individuals were rescued from the river. One was in critical condition, while the other escaped unharmed. Unfortunately, six members of the maintenance crew who were working on the bridge were reported missing and are presumed to have died after the Coast Guard suspended their search. Among them, one was from Honduras, two were from Guatemala, and the rest were from El Salvador and Mexico. 
Sonar technology detected five submerged vehicles, including three cars and a transit mixer. In the search and rescue operation, emergency services utilized drones and infrared technology. Tragically, the bodies of two maintenance crew members were found inside a red pickup truck. A 35-year-old Mexican citizen and a 26-year-old Guatemalan citizen. They were discovered approximately 25 feet below the bridge's midsection. Due to the unstable debris and the risk of further collapse. The and I heard like literally from the moment that they ended up in the water, they would have had literally, I think, only an hour. That's what I heard in one of the news reports, but I could be wrong or that report could be wrong, et cetera, et cetera. But if I'm not mistaken, that's what I heard. But if they only had an hour to get out of the water, it's just crazy because I think they didn't even really get to start a search until it was sunlight out. So when this whole situation happened, it was pitch black out pretty much already still. So, but other than that, man, let's get back to the vid. Search efforts were halted. Additionally, a 38-year-old Honduran citizen and a 49-year-old citizen of El Salvador are among those still missing. Thankfully, all crew members of the MV Dali, including the two pilots, were safe and didn't sustain any major injuries. Only one crew member suffered minor injuries and required stitches. Organizations like the Baltimore International Seafarers Center offered support to the crew members, providing amenities such as Wi-Fi hotspots as they remained on board the ship. The National Transportation Safety Board, or NTSB, launched an investigation into the collapse and immediately dispatched a team to the site. They are still expected to release a preliminary report within two to four weeks after the incident, followed by urgent safety recommendations. The full investigation may last anywhere from 12 to 24 months. Additionally, the FBI was present at the scene, but quickly ruled out terrorism as a cause. On March 27th, a Unified Command Joint Information Center was set up to oversee the investigation. And so it's good that it was at least not a terrorist attack or anything to that um, extent. So other than that, it's pretty much looking like a, a very crazy accident that just happened. So other than that, let's get back to the bid. Salvage operations. This command includes members from various agencies, such as the US Coast Guard, Maryland Department of the Environment, Maryland Transportation Authority, Maryland State Police, this, um, and Synergy like Marine, who are the primary like stakeholders that. in the overall case. Singapore's Crazy. Transport Safety Africa Investigation Africa, Bureau so. and the Maritime and Port Authority sent their personnel to Baltimore to assist with the investigations as well. The NTSB team boarded the MV Dali on the evening of March 26th and retrieved the voyage data recorder. This device will aid investigators in constructing a timeline leading up to the collision. Potential factors under consideration include the possibility of contaminated fuel or the use of an improper fuel grade, causing the ship to lose power. To assess the force of the impact with the pier, the New York Times utilized equations from a book highlighting vessel and bridge collisions. They estimated the force to be between 120 million and 230 million newtons. To put this into perspective, Saturn V rockets produced 35 million newtons of thrust at launch, which means the MV Dali crash was possibly over six times stronger than a rocket ship at takeoff. <laughs> In the immediate aftermath, maritime access to most of the port of Baltimore was blocked by debris, affecting over 40 ships. Only the trade point Atlantic Marine Terminal remained open. Governor Wes Moore declared a state of emergency, suspending shipping to and from the port, while air traffic around the incident site was restricted. Salvage operations involved the US Army Corps of Engineers and the US Navy, using heavy lift cranes to remove the submerged parts of the bridge. Over 1,100 specialists were deployed, along with various vessels and equipment. Temporary passages for work vessels were opened, with approval needed for ships to enter. The bridge closure disrupted traffic, leading to detours and delays. Baltimore's marine terminals closed, prompting shipping lines to seek alternative ports. Stellantis, General Motors and Toyota redirected imports. 
affecting various terminals and causing economic concerns. Government responses included emergency legislation and offers of assistance. Investigations into the collapse are ongoing, with potential implications for future bridge designs and regulations. Insured losses were estimated to range from $1 billion to $4 billion, with the state government's insurance covering up to $350 million. The possibility of replacing the bridge raised logistical and funding considerations with initial emergency aid provided by the federal government. Joe Biden pledged support for reconstruction efforts, while Secretary of Transportation urged Congress to fund a... Yeah, you pretty much also looking at it as they got a lot of stuff that was dependent on to come through this port as well. So stuff literally from cars to house accessories or any other merchandise, et cetera, et cetera, that people would need to pretty much survive their daily lives and stuff or whatever the case may be, et cetera, et cetera. So it's all types of stuff on these ships that this port is dependent on to have these ships pass through to get stuff delivered and shipped around the U.S. and stuff, et cetera, et cetera. So other than that, man, it's definitely, like they said, going to have cost up costed them a lot of money to get this bridge now rebuilt and on top of that um the damages and everything the debris and all that that fell into the water and on this ship alone as well and other merchandise losses and stuff like that as well so that's it man that's this is definitely gonna take i feel like probably more than a decade maybe to get this all situated because i I read a report where they pretty much said the bridge would take about a decade or more to be completely completed, but they already saying the investigation into this is going to take like 12 to 24 months, so pretty much one to two years still surrounding this whole situation. So it's just crazy that how literally in seconds all of this has caused a lot to happen as the effect. So with that said, man, that's pretty much um towards the end of the video right now. So we're gonna go ahead and continue on and get up out of here because this video is definitely touching almost the 30 minute mark, but we're gonna go ahead and continue. Placement bridge. Consular assistance was offered to affected families with recognition given to Dali's crew and emergency responders for their actions during the crisis. It should be noted that the MV Dali was also part of a collision incident back in 2016. Reports from Vessel Finder and Shipwreck Log a maritime incident archive indicate that the Dali was leaving the port of Antwerp, Belgium, bound for Bremerhaven. During its departure, the ship's front end swung, causing its rear to scrape against the quay, resulting in significant damage to several meters of the hull. Authorities detained the vessel after the incident, and it was brought to a dock in Belgium. Fortunately, no injuries or environmental pollutions were reported. Weather conditions were reported to be favorable at the time, and the incident was attributed to errors made by the ship's captain and onboard pilot. Details about the crew on board during the incident remain unclear, and the search for the remaining missing works of the present day disaster remains ongoing as of the time of this video. So that's it for this episode. If you want to hear more about maritime disasters and stories throughout history, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week for another video. And that's pretty much the end of the video. So it's um, pretty much going to take about 12 to 24 months before they pretty much going to complete this investigation of what really happened and what pretty much led up to the ship losing power multiple times and crashing into the bridge. So with that said, all we can do is wait until uh, more updates come out around the situation. Once the investigation, like he said, over in 12 to 24 months, then we'll fully know like what really happened and why it happened, et cetera, et cetera. But with that said, man, that's pretty much the end of the video, man. If you guys enjoyed the video um, or stuck around and watched the whole video, man, definitely smash that like button. And also, don't forget to comment on the video and don't forget to turn on post notifications so you guys get notified when I drop new videos. And also, don't forget to um, comment. But with that said, though, man, that's the end of the video. And I'll catch you guys later on more. So stay tuned. Peace. Thank you.